but I just want to welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today for Lunch with Lucy. Um, my name is Kate Remillard. I'm on the marketing team at VHT Studios, and I'll be your MC today. We have an amazing guest, uh, but before we get started, just need to mention that we do have everybody muted. So if you have a question for our guests, just add it to the Q&A box, and we'll get to that as we go. And at the end, we'll also have um, some time at the end to announce the five winners of the free lunch provided by VHT Studios. So you must be present to win. So stick around. And now I'm happy to introduce our host, Lucy Edwards. Hello, everybody. Lucy Edwards, Director of Client Success at VHT Studios. And today, my guest is Pam O'Connor. So Pam is a veteran of real estate industry. She has been around for quite some time and she was working with uh, broker owners, with managers, with realtors. So it's wealth of information. And uh, today we are going to take advantage of all her knowledge and ask hopefully the right questions, but you are welcome to participate as well and put some questions in the chat. So uh, that, that would be amazing if you do that. And we're also going to have some polls. So please participate in our polls. Uh, in today's environment, we have, especially in the last year and a half, uh, everything is changing so rapidly and agents more than ever leverage their own brand with their company brand. And uh, we notice that throughout the country, the change how uh, broker owners are investing more and more energy into their company brand. So it's easier for their agents to uh, to flourish and uh, to grow their business. So let's talk about that, Pam. So why is company-generated business important for brokerages now? Uh, thank you, Lucy. It's good to be with you. And um, I'm a big fan of VHT and Brian Valda, so it's always fun to uh, be involved with, with these folks. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, everybody in business is about profitability, right? And so um, how do you get there? You have to take in more than you spend. And obviously, it's not always easy to manage expenses. So you want to look at that top line. And that in the world of real estate is business development. So for brokers, um, the two big advantages are obviously uh, recruiting and retention, because the more leads that a uh, company generated business that a brokerage can offer their agents, they're uh, probably more inclined to attract good people who are looking for that. So the recruiting, recruiting and retention benefit is huge. But in addition to that, the margins for brokers have really um, diminished over the years. So what, you know, where it used to be 20, 25% profit margins, it's now down to around 13%. And uh, what can really make a difference for brokers is if they can uh, bring some business into the into the brokerage and, and uh, refer that out to agents and sometimes have a little bit of margin for referral fee that basically reimburses them for their investment, but also, um, you know, helps with those profit margins. So, so those are the reasons, um, you know, that brokers would be involved. And also the referral business, like uh, with uh, uh, Luxury Portfolio International, with uh, leading real estate uh, companies of the world, all that plays a big role to, in today's environment as well. So there are more and more companies that are joining those, uh, not nationwide even, actually global organizations to promote their company and to help their agents. Would you agree with me? Yes, absolutely. So there, when you think about the, the brokerage business today, you've sort of got um, uh, two different groups, I guess, in terms of models. And one would be what I would call the more traditional full service brokerages, which would be, um, you know, organizations like leading real estate companies of the world, a lot of the Realogy brokerages, the Berkshire Hathaway brokerages. And then you've got a lot of others that are more limited services bro brokerages. And the difference being really their, their um, compensation models. So a lot of what I'll talk about in terms of business development is on the more traditional side because their um, model allows them to invest in some of these uh, company generating business uh, enterprises, whereas uh, a brokerage who's running a company that doesn't have that might rely more on the agents to do it because those agents are earning higher splits. So just that for background, but most uh, companies that do really go after 
business development in a really formal way on the brokerage side have what I call business development departments. They in the past were called relocation departments uh, and some still are, but they kind of focus on areas where they become the marketing um, uh, you know, end of things to go after business that, that generates a lot of leads into uh, into their brokerages for their agents. And the, you know, there are probably really three major areas then. One is what you mentioned, broker to broker referral business. And I'm gonna come back to that, but then uh, corporate relocation is another one. And, um, and then the third is probably e-leads. So those departments really encompass all of those. And on the corporate reload side of things, that's obviously been a little slower in the last few years because of, of COVID where people are working remotely. There haven't been as many transfers, but it is starting to pick up now. And uh, interestingly, I talked to a, a, a guy who's with uh, one of the large relocation companies the other day and Facebook of all people, you would assume they're all remote, but they're starting to do a lot of movement right now because they hire people during COVID. Now they want them closer to the, uh, to different pods. Um, so the corporate reload business either comes directly if a relocation department goes after that to local corporations, but more than uh, more often than not, it comes through a uh, the uh, relocation management company. And uh, it's very difficult for individual agents to go after that without, because so much of it gets funneled through relocation departments, but that's one big area. Um, another one is the uh, broker to broker business, as I mentioned a minute ago, and that is huge now because there's so many people that are moving on their own because they can't, you know, because of COVID, you know, they have a different uh, uh, circumstance than they did before. They're either moving all together, they're uh, investing in a second home, so they have some flexibility, a lot of things along those lines. Uh, so a lot of the relocation departments that are with traditional companies and do have uh, membership in a network, again, whether it's something like Leading RE or BHHS or uh, Realogy, um, the different brands that fall under that umbrella, uh, those companies are in a really good position to leverage the business from all the other companies in those networks. So by sending business and then receiving it back. So that's another area that relocation or business development departments go after. And then the last one is just e-leads, which I can talk more about from the agent standpoint, but those are all of the platforms uh, and portals that generate leads uh, to agents, sometimes through the brokerage, sometimes not. But where brokers can really add value is to um, incubate, if you will, those leads so that, as we know, many times there's a, a long curve of time before they uh, people start looking online and they may not buy for two or three years even. So uh, agents get busy with other things. And if the brokerage can help sort of develop those leads until they are closer to the buying cycle, it's a huge benefit to their agents. Well, and uh, actually what came to my mind uh, with companies that are part of leading RE or luxury portfolio, so obviously there are companies like uh, Berkshire Hathaway and someone with thousands and thousands of agents, but also a smaller boutique firms. I just interviewed Jim Balistrieri from uh, Balistrieri from uh, Florida, yes. and uh, yeah, and he is uh, a, a amazing personality, amazing character. He was saying that he received about seventy five percent of his business through leading RE. So even the company with that is smaller, mm -hmm. that is not nationwide that is local in a certain area of, uh, of the state, also benefiting. And if you are using your uh, programs right, if you are investing in understanding what is offered, I think you can take advantage of it and really make it happen. And you don't have to be a multi-thousand uh, agent company. Yeah, and, and you are so right, Lucy. And I obviously have a lot of experience with that network because uh, I spent many years there, but um, we had a lot of what I would call um, mid-size or smaller firms, a lot of companies under 100 agents that, or under three or 400 agents along with the large ones. And some of the, the best um, performing companies in, in the whole relocation space were um, those smaller firms because they knew all of their agents, they knew which ones would be the right fit for certain clients coming in and, and, uh, and they put a lot of effort into, uh, uh, you know, putting business into the system so that others wanted to reciprocate. 
and also about relocation. And I spoke to you before uh, before our talk show uh, that I'm I, I met a team of uh, about ten agents, and they invested their energy in approaching companies and corporations where they build their own relationship on their own. And then uh, every time someone is relocated for that company, they get uh, all the listings, they get the buyers, they get the sellers. So they built their niche, if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it's it's very profitable. So yeah, there are ways yeah. to work around it, right? Right. That I think the, it's more and more challenging to do that because so many of the corporations and um, you know, a lot of these different entities work through relocation companies. They basically outsource the administration of their employee moves to someone. So it's it's hard to go direct. But the ones that are probably uh, present the best opportunities would be um, startup companies that are just starting to move people and they don't have that um, management company in place yet. And you're right, if, if a brokerage uh, of any size or an agent do a really good job in getting in on the ground floor, then many times, even when they go to a relocation company, they say, I want to use that person. So there are opportunities. Um, another area would be sort of professional firms. They often get overlooked, um, CPA firms, law firms, um, hospitals, universities. So there are uh, opportunities uh, for people to go after that direct business. But it's 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 just more difficult to go after the you know the GMs and some of the large corporations because more often than not they have a, a company and in that case if you're with a um, a brokerage that has a relocation department you want to work through them because they're going through they're actually trying to get business from the relocation companies and so there is a way to get it but it's just a little more convoluted it's just more complicated yeah. right and I believe that referrals. They don't have to be company to company. I think if you uh, spread the word and you are uh, in, you you are participating in different webinars and you are meeting people online, different agents throughout the country, you have your own CRM and you have your own library of great agents that you can build your relationship and uh, and work uh, your networking group that way. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Um, you know, if you are part of a network. Um, that's a really great opportunity because you can leverage all the business and and be on the relocation team to get it on, on on the other end. But if you even if even to augment that business or um, for companies that don't have a relocation department for agents in those firms, uh, you certainly can uh, go after that business. I'm, I was always one who said you have to give to receive. So the more business you send out, the more attuned you are to uh, referral opportunities yourself as an agent. And the more you send that business, the more likely you are uh, for those other people to want to send you business back, whether it's through your relocation department where they request you or, or agent to agent. And uh, for those agents who don't have relocation departments, um, certainly a lot of them are involved with groups like uh, some of the coaching groups like Tom Ferry, Buffini. Um, uh, they go to different types of industry meetings. Inman's going on this week. Uh, they may be going to NAR meetings where they meet people. And building those relationships um, is a way to start trying to generate that that agent to agent repro business. And, um, you know, the other thing today is just think about your friends and family. Uh, I have a great story, I'll tell you very briefly that, uh, that uh, um, in my own situation where when I moved from Atlanta to Chicago many years ago for my, for my job, I didn't renew my license because I didn't really need it in the job that I had. So, um, uh, you know, but people knew that I was with a network that knew that had brokerages and agents everywhere. And I often got calls to refer people. So I got one one day and it was going to uh, San Francisco and I placed this referral, didn't know the person, kind of forgot about it. And about um, uh, three months later, I got um, a, a very expensive bottle of wine and a lovely uh, thank you note in the mail. Uh, and this relocation director in that company said, thank you so much for this wonderful business, Pam. Uh, it's the highest sale year to date in San Francisco. It was a $32 million sale with a $100,000 referral fee. But of course, I couldn't take it because I didn't have my license. So long story short, I did go back and get my license. But my point there is... Um, there are opportunities everywhere with your friends and family. And in this particular situation, 
it happened to be the CEO of a very large corporation that does a lot of business in the real estate industry. And he didn't have an agent. So don't assume that everybody does. So think about your neighbors and friends as an agent. When, you, when you're talking to people, don't just say, you know, if you ever have a, a, a need for yourself to buy or sell real estate, come to me. Add to that, or if you know anyone here or in another city, because I have a great network and I can help you anywhere you're going. So if you kind of broaden your mindset there, uh, I think it can be valuable. And uh, today, there's so much movement going on. There are a lot of opportunities. I probably, I probably myself personally do 10 at least referrals a year. And the interesting um, a thing, uh, you know, that sort of adds to that is uh, some of the studies, I think CoreLogic just came out with one that talks about the, um, the inbound markets versus the outbound markets. And if you, as I am in Sarasota, Florida, there's a lot of inbound business. If you can track in studies like that, the, the movers also do these very often where people are coming from, then think about who you know, what, what real estate companies or agents you know in those markets and really target them because there's probably a flow of business that could be coming your way. No, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed one uh, agent uh, here in Florida. He's in Boca Raton and he was saying that uh, he was going to New York City and meeting every agent, stopping by, it's, it's a network, and stopping by at every desk and chatting. And now it's coming back to him uh, one million times more because he already introduced himself as a great agent in Florida. So all New York business is coming uh, his way. So he was uh, so thankful that he invested yeah. his time and his efforts in, in uh, flying to New York once a month and reminding about himself in person. Not, yeah. but that was before COVID. But now, well, ever since COVID, everyone remembered him because absolutely. he was there every other month. So the marketing piece, you know, marketing you, yourself and your brand is, is obviously important. The other, the biggest part of this is to do a great job, which sounds so basic, but if you, no matter what the source, if you get a piece of business from either another agent or a relocation department or a corporation or whoever, if you build a reputation as being a go-to person who really does a great job, um, you'll get more business. It sounds so basic, but it's true, so. Absolutely. I would like to also uh, touch base because I thought it was a very interesting topic for our audience, online lead platforms. And you had great information on that. So if we can jump yeah, in. Yes. So, um, you know, there, well, let me back up first and just say that in um, the relocation business, there are some challenges. It's good for agents to know this. And I'll, I'll lead into why e-leads, I think, can be a lucrative source of business today. But in the relocation world, you've got, you've got issues that um, uh, there are less buyers, more renters in corporate relocation than there used to be. There are issues with conflicting referrals that you might get. There are high referral fees sometimes. So there are challenges with that business. But um, when you look at the e-lead business, that's bigger than ever because more and more consumers go online and whether it's to Zillow or to one of the platforms that I'm about to mention. And this is an area that sometimes um, these firms work through brokerages and sometimes they go directly to agents. So there are opportunities for both. Um, but what I'm talking about are, you know, some of the, the uh, you know, the platforms, um, I'll just list some of them like OpCity, UpNest, uh, 55 Place is another one, uh, Rocket Homes, um, uh, Ojo. And I ran across through a friend, uh, an agent, I think he's a Berkshire Hathaway agent. His name is Jimmy Burgess. So I'm just going to share this little tip for everybody who wants to learn more about this. And Jimmy does a series of uh, podcasts. So if you go to YouTube and just Google his name, Jimmy Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S-S, -S, and put in uh, online lead platforms, um, it will, he actually goes through the different platforms and describes uh, which ones tend to work through brokers, which ones go direct to agents, um, what the pros and cons of each one uh, might be. And what these companies are doing is basically what I mentioned a few minutes ago about uh, brokerage companies. They are incubating these leads. So they're, you know, they're using their staff to get them to the point where they are more buyer ready. And so that an agent doesn't have to do that. And yes, you do pay a referral fee for them, but, um, but by the time you get them there, they tend to be better quality than you might get on some of the portals, which, you know, 
come to you earlier in that cycle and need a lot of um, uh, TLC before they are ready to buy. So um, anyway, if, if people are interested in, in uh, uh, going after that business, I know some of my relocation director friends tell me that they're seeing um, more business from, from some of these platforms um, than they're getting from the corporate relocation sector nowadays. So uh, it's more uh, retail business in the sense of individuals moving rather than through corporations. Thank you so much. Uh, also, we had a comment from Elizabeth Fuller. Uh, the flaw in this is that we cannot do this today. We cannot even cold call in the state. Uh, let's get out of the past and get the reality. So I think what you just mentioned, it's really related to the current situation and to today's situation. And uh, if you can just spend a minute or two on iBuyer leads. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, there are varying levels of participation that individual agents or brokerages can have with the iBuyer space. But, um, you know, and it's not, it's still a relatively small percentage of the total, even though it gets a lot of, um, you know, airtime on uh, industry media. But um, there are, if you have a seller who you know is interested in that model, it probably makes some sense depending on the circumstances and the price point and your location, because iBuyers tend to buy um, homogenous kinds of homes, homes that are easy to price, um, you know, stock floor plans, uh, not the real high end homes. So, and they tend to go to certain markets where there are more of those. So if you can, if you're in a market where you have a seller that might be interested in that, sometimes it makes sense to bring them into the mix and get, you know, give them an idea of here's what you can get here, but you're probably gonna pay a premium for that. Um, uh, but you get a lot of convenience, you just turn it over and you don't have to go through listing your home or give them, you know, the other circumstance. And in, in this kind of a market where homes are selling quick and there's low inventory, um, I think it's even, I think you can make a better argument for working directly with you. But, um, but the, the, I think the best person who really tracks iBuyers and the trends and what's happening in that space is a guy named Mike Del Credi that some people are familiar with. And Mike has a website. I think it's um, Mike, uh, um, what is it? Mike DP, D is in dog, P is, B, P is in Peter.com. And he does all sorts of uh, trend studies, uh, white papers for free on what's happening in a lot of a lot of areas of real estate, but he, he really specializes in iBuyers. So I would suggest people go on and learn more about that and see what are the opportunities. Sometimes, even though they have their own agents, there may be times when you could work with them. And, and uh, so it's good to understand the different ones. We're talking, of course, like Open Door, um, uh, Offer Pad. Uh, Zillow does iBuying, but they have just recently come out with a, a uh, a notification that they're not buying homes, I think, through the end of the year. So that one may not be as active right now. And um, I would like to just touch base on rentals. In my old days, uh, we had uh, uh, rent with option to buy. But now there are so many programs that are created, especially for the first time buyers or maybe for someone not with a great credit. Can we uh, talk about the, the few programs that you mentioned earlier. Right, right, right. Well, um, the rental business is one of the things a lot of agents through the years have poo-pooed because it doesn't create a lot of revenue um, and it can be time consuming. But I would really say to anybody today, you need to change your mindset because on the, on the corporate relocation side, it used to be 60, 40 homeowners to renters. It's the flip of that today. So that's one point. Um, in the... Um, uh, we're seeing this phenomenon that just kind of amazes me, but um, where you're seeing build to rent, you're seeing entire um, single family and apartment complexes uh, being developed that are strictly to rent to people, not to sell. And um, if you, and because so many millennials who are just such a huge part of the population may not yet be in the position to buy, they are going to rent. So if, if you as an agent understand that you've got to invest some time in that, understanding the inventory, understanding some of these new types of communities, the build to rent communities that are out there and what the, um, um, you know, the, uh, the resources are for rentals. And if you spend the time with those people to not only help them find a rental, but to educate them on the gap between where they might be in their financial situation and the ability to buy, because rates are so low, it's still a great bargain to buy, but a lot of people really don't understand that. So if you as an agent, 
help them find a rental, educate them, and then third, most important thing, stay in touch with them um, over the, the, the life of their lease. There's just a huge benefit there because who are they going to go to? You're going to be their, their expert in real estate. Um, the other uh, phenomenon that's out there right now that I think is, is also very interesting is um, the rent to buy um, space. So there are um, there are a couple of companies that have been around in that for a little while. One is Diddy Homes. Some people may be familiar with one is uh, called Home Partners of America. I think DiddyHomes.com, HomePartners.com. And uh, but there's a new one that I'm really interested in because number one, I know the guy who's one of the partners in it. He used to uh, run Houlihan Lawrence, one of the leading RE members up in Westchester County, New York. And um, and they are called Halo. It's their website is HaloPrograms.com, I believe it is. And they are all about increasing the level of home ownership uh, with their model. So basically, what happens is they identify uh, people who would today be renters but want to buy a home, and they they sort of pre-qualify them and see what their potential might be. Maybe today they can't buy, but they might be in a position because of a job or whatever where they could be in a few years. And what they do is um, is once they've qualified that person, they tell them, go out and find a house you would like to buy today. And then if, uh, if both the home and, the, and that um, individual meet their qualifications, this company, Halo, buys the home, rents it back to that person. And in that period uh, of the lease, they collect rent, but it's market level rent so that there is still money left over for the individual to um, uh, save for the down payment. And they really educate that person, help with them, them with their credit score and everything they need to be able to buy. So their goal is to turn that person into a buyer in a few years. So as an agent, you need to understand that is an option out there. The other, the other companies I mentioned do that as well. And um, it could be that you you can work with somebody who maybe today would only be a renter, but could actually be a buyer through this uh, kind of a model. And uh, and and uh, uh, if you want, if you work with each one of these companies, you can understand how you can make the commission in doing all of that. So that's another new, relatively new phenomenon that people should be aware of. No, that's that is absolutely great. That's exactly what I think we need is something new. Uh, new directions for agents to explore. And uh, if you don't mind, you, uh, if you can please repeat the uh, the website. So, Kate. If yeah, you can sure. Um, one is, um, let's see, it's Halo Program, H A L O Program.com. Uh, Divi Homes, D is in dog, I V V like Victor Y, D I V V Y Homes.com. And the third one is um, HomePartners.com, I believe. Uh, and there may be others, but those are probably the three I'm most familiar with. Thank you. And also, uh, you were talking about the YouTube of the gentleman who is actually educating other agents. He is an agent, but he's sharing his uh, information and his knowledge. Yes. Yeah, so that's uh, on the, uh, you mean on the on online platforms? Um, mm -hmm. That's Jimmy Burgess. So if you, yes. if you go to YouTube and just uh, Google Jimmy Burgess, B-U-R-G-E-S-S, and put in um, online online lead platforms. Um, it, that that particular video should come up. He does others too. So I, he he. I don't know him personally, but I've I've been impressed watching some of his material. Thank you so much. One, okay. one other resource, um, Lucy, that I, I I wanted to mention is. Uh, going back to brokers, if there are brokers out there who are don't have a relocation department and are interested in how they could develop one or what's involved with that, um, um, I have a friend who's who actually came out of the Realogy side of the industry, uh, ran relocation departments for many years, and uh, her name is Teresa Howe. And Teresa, I think if you just, uh, I think you can email mail her email her at, um, let me see here, I think it's T how um t-h-o-w-e um oh no it's not sorry it's teresa t-e-r-e-s-a dot h-o-w-e at c-a moves uh cal like c-a as in california c-a-m-o-v-e-s dot com and she has a consulting practice where she really specializes in working with brokerages that would like to start uh business development departments no, oh, that is that is very valuable. Thank you, Pam. Oh, Kate, can we run through our polls? That's the fun part. I love polls. I I love to see how people react uh, to our questions and our conversations. And 
um, what what they find interesting. And also, like I know we had a poll on renters, so let's see uh, what the result is. And yes. while Pam is uh, pulling it up, I just wanted to thank you, Pam. It was so it was so much fun, and uh, appreciate all the information that is. For me, uh, I haven't heard a lot of it at all. So it's very, it's it's great to share it with our My audience. My pleasure. It's great to see you both. And thank you. Thank you, Kate and Lucy. Lo loved having the opportunity. <laughs> Thanks. Absolutely. Um, so our first poll that we did at the beginning of the show was asking if your brokerage provides you with leads. And 33% um, said yes. 52% said no, and 15% said yes, but they're not great. Mm. So that's interesting for it's, sure. Yeah. Um, and then what percentage of your business is attributed to referrals? Um, this was kind of evenly spread out. So 38% said zero to 25%, 16%, 25 to 50 30%, 50 to 75. And there was 16% um, who actually say that 75 to 100% of their business is from referrals. That is fabulous. That That is wonderful. And coming back to our first poll, I certainly hope that our audience will take the information to their broker owners and see if they can utilize the information that you are getting today and maybe implementing something like that for for the company and for and for their agents. So what's what's our third poll? Third yep, poll is then, the rentals. Yeah, the third was um, asking if they will work with rentals and uh, renters in the next twelve months, and uh, thirty four percent say yes, and they already do work with renters. Thirty one percent said yes, I'm open to it. Thirteen percent said possibly, but not my thing, and twenty two percent said no, not interested. You know, Lucy, there's one thing I didn't mention, uh, another little opportunity that I thought of because of the renter poll, and that is um, <clears throat> international business. Um, you know, right now, I, I was talking to a, a relocation director the other day who told me that um, all of a sudden they're getting a lot of movement from their international clients because borders are starting to open back up and that sort of thing. And more often than not, those companies really, uh, when they transfer people, usually you know, these expats come in for maybe three years to a new country. They don't want them to buy homes because they don't want to have to buy those homes when they move back out. But what is happening is there's a, been a movement over many years now um, uh, for something called international resettlement, which is something that an agent could offer very easily, uh, either through their relocation department or if they know if there are corporations in their area that do move people internationally um, to approach them, not not just for all their business, but to say, I do international resettlement tours. And what that involves, what that consists of is, is perhaps helping the person find a rental. But in addition to that, it's helping them get their driver's license, their social security card. If they're from Colombia, taking them to the Colombian grocery store, uh, giving them an orientation on what it's like to live and work in the U.S. And those people are paid by the hour or by, you know, a day fee for working on that. So there is a need for that and more and more. So if you're an agent, you're, and especially if you have more than one language, uh, that could be a real, um, you know, perhaps opportunity for you, depending on where you're located. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, and we spoke about that. Thank you for adding that uh, mm -hmm. to our conversation. Anyone else has any questions? That's your opportunity, so please. Okay, I guess that's it for today. Oh, Pam, thank you so much. It was uh, it was a lot of fun, and um, I I personally believe great information, uh, something that our audience appreciates. So, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and um, I just want to take a minute. Uh, let me get my screen up here. Okay. Um, want to take a minute to let you know about our next show. It's coming up on um, November uh, 17th, and it is with Michelle D'Amico. She is um, a PR expert, CEO of her own company, Michelle D'Amico Communications. So we're going to be talking about how realtors can leverage 
the media to um, strengthen their brand and get more business. So it'll be super interesting. Um, we'll send invites out for that soon. Very quickly, since we, we probably have one more minute, we do have a question in our uh, Q&A. Uh, I am uh, in my company, we have a reload department which does get requests. It seems all, that only special agents that are liked by the office and by the broker, how do we get referrals? Um, that's a very good question. And it's not necessarily that they don't like you. Um, most companies uh, uh, that have relocation departments have some sort of a qualification structure. And um, by that, I mean, they they require to be on their team, their, their team of agents who can receive this business. They require them to go through some sort of relocation training because Corporate business does have some unusual requirements. You have to be able to do a very specific type of BMA, they call it, rather than CMA. You have to understand certain contract language that's used. It's different from other types of transactions. So there's usually a training component. Um, they also uh, tend to uh, uh, want agents that have some experience or that maybe specialize in certain areas and are, are and want that business because some agents really don't. They have enough of a flow of business that they don't need the relocation business. So um, there is usually some kind of a, a, a series of qualifications. So before you assume that they're just going to people they like, and if they're going to some of the same people, it's probably because those people have really performed well. So the big uh, challenge is to get in the door. And so you first need to ask the relocation director the question, tell me how to get on your team. What do I need to do? Is there some, is there some training I need to undergo? Is there, what else could I do to show you that I, I am interested and willing to, to do that? In some cases, you may be willing to uh, take renters and people are not, may not be able to be on that team. So first find that out and, um, and then do a great job and you will get repeat business. Yeah, thank you, Pam. Thank you. Well, great. thank That's you everybody. Uh, have a great the rest of the week and we will see you soon uh, and, uh, and happy cheers. halloween to everybody oh happy halloween <laughs> that's right happy halloween yep it's coming up <laughs> thank, have you, a, have a great thank, thank you thank you everybody thank, thank, thank you everybody thank you